Hi David, thank you very much for joining me. I'd like to start with a quick introduction. You have a Bachelor of Civil Engineering, you're a Monash alumni, and you have been a civil engineer now for over 30 years. You have held leadership roles across major infrastructure projects, including light and heavy rail, building and industrial structures, highways, urban development, water and maritime projects. You're currently state manager at SMEC, a global engineering management and development consultancy. You're also chair of the Monash Department of Civil Engineering Industry Advisory Committee and a fellow of the Institution of Engineers Australia. Welcome. It's great to have this opportunity to find out more about you and your career in civil engineering. So my first question um, for you is when you were considering your options at school, what do you think attracted you to engineering? Um, well, thank you for the introduction. Um, uh, look, I always had a curiosity about science and the built world and my parents encouraged that. Uh, fortunately, through books and, and TV shows and, and the like. I, I had uh, many science and technology books as a child and we had a, a really good encyclopedia which I thumbed through constantly and I fell in love with uh, science-based shows like The Curiosity Show, which was fantastic, and uh, Carl Sagan's Cosmos, which really sort of got me interested in, in physics and cosmology as well. Um, and when I, in, when I was in high school, the subjects I enjoyed the most were maths and physics, sort of stemming on from, from that uh, earlier curiosity, and also English. And, and like anybody, I, I considered a, a multitude of potential careers uh, during high school, including journalism. I really toyed with that for a while. Um, architecture and, uh, and in engineering, of course. I grew up in the Low Trobe Valley, big industrial kind of area, so engineering was sort of a natural fit in many ways. Um, and in, indeed, uh, when I did work experience in year 10, I did two weeks at, uh, as part of the investigations division at the State Electricity Commission uh, at your lawn, based at your lawn, and uh, got to look at all the coal handling equipment around your lawn and, and Hazelwood and the mines next to them and uh, just working alongside experienced mechanical engineers. I, I just found the whole world really fascinating um, and really, really enjoyed it. Um, and from really from that moment onwards, I decided, yeah, look, I'll be, I'll be a mechanical engineer. And, and I must admit my initial um, thought was because I love cars I, I'll be a mechanical engineer I really love cars and I'll design cars for a living and that'll be brilliant and then of course I went to uni we did our, our common first year and found myself not really enjoying the mechanical engineering course as much or the the subjects as much and I was, was really enjoying the civil courses so I thought oh, well I love cars I'll design roads and I decided to become a civil engineer um, a decision I've not once regretted I think it's been a really good decision. Excellent that's really good to hear. Um, look you're obviously heavily involved with engineering at Monash and in particular civil engineering how do you think our engineers are equipped to enter the workforce and make an impact early on in their careers? Look I found young people um, bring new perspective and new ideas to the organisations they join. And, and that's really where their value lies. I know when I finished my course um, and, start, and joined the workforce, I felt that I learnt far more about uh, the career of engineering um, in my first year than I did in the four years that I was at university. Um, it, and it was a steep learning curve. But by the same token, um, I was looking at things with fresh eyes and questioning why things are done the way that they're done. And sometimes, yeah, you, you can accept that that is the way that things should be done. But sometimes you look at things and say, no, there's a better way. And I think that's um, the, the brilliant bit about working with young people, that they will look at things with those fresh eyes and they'll, they'll question why things are the way that they are. And they'll often ask, well, why should it be that way? Why can't it be done this way? Because that's how progress and innovation happens. Um, I work quite closely with our, our graduate group at SMEC and I encourage them to share their ideas and, and question traditional approaches because of that. Um, and I, I often tell the story to them about how Einstein came up with the theory of relativity back in his 20s. And I challenge them, you know, I say, who, after all, who's to say that a young engineer just starting out won't come up with the next great engineering innovation? So from your work 
obviously with you know engineers and graduates in particular what specific skills do you believe, believe engineers possess that will equip them to respond to these unprecedented and challenging times um, engineers are trained to solve problems and use resources economically um, there's actually much truth in the saying pessimists see a glass half empty optimists see a glass half full engineers see a glass twice as large as it needs to be um, so engineers are really good at applying problem solving and critical thinking things that we learn uh, well, we start to learn at university and we really hone those skills once we hit the workforce. Um, but we, we're really good at applying those skills to wicked problems. So wicked problems are, you know, on the face of it, insoluble problems. They're, they're problems that you can only ever partly solve. Um, but what an engineer can do is break those problems into smaller, manageable uh, pieces and then apply those problem-solving skills to um, those manageable pieces. Um, I think that helps equip engineers to make the world a better place. So I think that is the mission statement of all engineers, is to make the world a better place and help lift the living standards of everybody around the world. Yeah, you're right. You know, we certainly need people with those skills um, at the moment. So leading on from that, can you tell us a bit about what roles you think civil engineers will play in the future and in particular in the post-COVID recovery? Um, well, I'll start with what's happening during COVID. So, so we've continued to work. What COVID has meant is that we've changed how we have to work, but we've still continued to work. So we've still been delivering projects and providing uh, critical services to infrastructure projects that uh, are going to have a lasting community benefit. Um, and also, obviously, projects that support the current response to the COVID pandemic. Engineers are involved in all of that. Um, as we come out the other side of the pandemic, I think our role is actually, if anything, going to become even more important. important. Um, government investment, any investment in community infrastructure, and by that I mean you know, all sorts of infrastructure from hospitals and buildings, roads and other transport type infrastructure, uh, energy related infrastructure, that investment has a multiplier effect that ripples through the economy. So if the government decides today to invest a billion dollars in some form of inf infrastructure, that investment is repaid over time on a multiple, you know, it, and it's often a significant multiple of that initial investment. And that's great for uh, our community. And governments know this, and so there will certainly be, and we're already starting to see, uh, governments talking about infrastructure investment as one of their levers to get the economy moving again. Um, it's going to help us recover from the current COVID crisis. Uh, it will also help make the, the community more resilient and address the needs of uh, any p potential future uh, similar crisis. Um, the projects that this is going to yield, uh, we're already seeing uh, some pretty major projects here in Melbourne, and, and one of them is actually going to be quite near to Monash uh, in the suburban rail loop, which is touted to be a 20-plus year project. Um, those projects are certainly going to power us out of the malaise that we're currently in from an economic point of view over the next 10 to 15 or more years. Engineers are going to be absolutely critical to delivering that program. Well, you've definitely covered um, some really important and major projects there. So finally, what piece of advice would you give to anyone considering studying civil engineering at Monash? Absolutely go for it. Look, engineering has been an amazing career choice for me, um, something I've never regretted. I have been involved in projects that have taken me all around the world. I've worked with some amazingly smart people. Um, many of whom, you know, I'm, I'm friends with even years after projects that we worked on together have concluded. Um, I've been well paid and I've had a lot of fun along the way. Um, I'm also really proud to say that, I, you know, with the, myself and my, my wife as a role model, uh, my daughter has chosen to follow our career choice into engineering, uh, having recently completed her degree and, and joined uh, a construction company she's working on uh, the redevelopment of Melbourne Park Stage 3. So I'm incredibly proud that my daughter has chosen not to rebel too much and, and uh, follow in our footsteps as engineers. And she's something she's not regretted yet.
Well, you think. must be very proud. <laughs> <laughs> clearly have a passion for engineering, which is fantastic. And I'm sure there will be many prospective students keen to find out more. I just want to um, finish to say thank you so much for your time. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you.